Hello everybody and thank you for stopping by for this week's video. Today we are going to be crafting my interpretation of the High Throne from Pathfinder's new book, The Mwangi Expanse. This week's video is going to be a little different. I'm not going to give you as much of the crafting and just give you some of the specifics of how I built it because it is fairly simple. In case you're not familiar with the High Throne, this is the reference photo I am using for this craft. As you can see, I broke the project down into five different areas, one, two, and three being the different levels, four being the uh, demonic ape skull, and then five being the entryway. One of the things I noticed at the very beginning is that the high throne is huge, and there's no way I could build this to scale. So I had to scale it down greatly and make some adjustments as a result of that. So let's get started with the first three levels, and I'll give you some idea of how I put those together. Looking at the picture, the walls have a slight slope to them. Initially, I started with a 45 degree angle and quickly realized that was way too sharp. I wound up going with a 65 degree angle and that was just straight up eyeballing it and just testing to see what I liked. So you can see the wires at about a 65 degree angle and then I moved my proxon fence to about an inch away from it. As you can see, you get a nice clean cut, and that's the angle that you're going to get at 65 degrees. Now when you cut it, you can see that the two pieces that you get line up perfectly, and that would be your second level for the wall. I put the two back to back, and then draw a line, and that's going to be where I'm going to cut. I take that section over to my workbench, and with my metal ruler, I go ahead and cut down the line I drew. The reason I'm showing this is a lot of times people say they can't get a clean cut with a uh, handheld razor knife and that it's, it's a jagged, ragged cut. So take a look at this cut and see what it looks like. Yeah, that cut's pretty bad. So let's go ahead and change the blade on my knife and let's do the same thing again. We're going to make a third level. So we just go through the same procedure again. We rip the 65 degree angle. Then we put the second level piece on top of the th third level piece. We draw a line and cut it out. And let's see what that looks like now. And as you can see, the second cut is super clean. So the moral of the story is switch your blade out. When you start one of these projects, you won't regret it. Once you got your strips cut out and you're ready to start assembling your walls, you're going to go ahead and hot glue your pieces together. My initial first floor is three se uh, sections high or three inches high because my foam is one inch in height. And then all my, all my other sections, uh, levels two and three, are going to be two inches high, so two sections of wall. So here I am showing you a corner piece that you're going to have to make because when you join the two sections of wall together, they're not going to be clean. So you're going to need to craft these little corner sections in order to join each corner of your walls. And this is on every level. But fear not, this is very easy to do. You're going to take a two inch block of foam. You're going to cut your 65 degree angle. You're going to rotate the piece 90 degrees and you're going to cut another 65 degree angle. So what you're going to wind up having are two 65 degree angles adjacent to each other and then two 90 degree angles adjacent to each other. Once my wall sections were together, I knew I was going to texture the outside with just the standard tinfoil ball method, but the inside I wanted to do some kind of hieroglyphs or something at least to the first floor. So I remembered that I had this green stuff roller called Necronic, and I just tipped my pieces over, pushed down real hard, and slowly rolled the roller over the foam, and it came out with a pretty decent impression. So what I do is I put the roller down on top of the wall section, with my right hand I'm pushing down hard, with my left hand I'm rolling the roller trying to maintain even pressure throughout the whole, the whole section. And as you can see, you'll find out what happens if you don't maintain uh, equal pressure throughout the whole section. So the bottom of the section of the wall, the impression didn't come out. The nice thing about this is just a pattern. I just put the roller down again, I didn't even line anything up, and just roll it again and it looks fine. The nice thing about this roller is the pattern is fairly irregular, so doing something like that, it really doesn't have any effect on it. So here we are showing the 
bottom level or level one assembled. As I said earlier, it's three strips high, three strips of foam high or three inches. The dimensions of the first level are 14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. And that's just a function of the fact that I had a piece of 15 inch square foam and I just had to trim a little bit off because it was damaged. So that's what I wound up with. I had to trim the inside corners a little bit in order to get the walls to line up evenly. And that's what you're looking at here. And here is level two. And as you can see, that's two inches in height or two strips of foam high. It, uh, the dimensions of it are eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. The piece of foam that it's sitting on is uh, 14 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches, the same as the base. And that's gonna be the, the uh, same all the way up. The roof of the level will be the same as the base, same dimensions as the base. And finally, we have level three, and that is six inches by six inches two strips of foam high or two inches in height. One of the things you notice I did is I took a little liberty and I made alcoves in each corner of each level and that's just to break it up a little bit so it's not just a box sitting on top of a box sitting on top of a box and on the bottom level I can put some statues and then maybe on the other two levels I can put some like burning you know braziers. Okay so now comes the fun part for me. The iconic portion of this build is definitely going to be the demon ape skull sitting at the top of it. And needless to say, I didn't have a demon ape skull on hand, but I did have a plastic human skull. So I broke out my air dry clay because that's all I had. And I attempted to, to sculpt some horns or I guess some tusks on the ape. I have no idea what I'm doing because I've never done this before. So the first thing I try is I just roll out a long tube with the clay. And once I have it to a, a shape and a thickness that I like, I go ahead and start pressing it into the side of the skull and try to sculpt the uh, tusk and the bone area that holds the tusk. So after fiddling with that for a little while, I realized that uh, the tusk I had made was way too big. So the beauty of this clay is I just took out my X-Acto and just cut a piece of it off and then just pushed the tusk piece back on and just blended the two together. One of the things I did do before pushing the tusk back onto the other section is I used a small section of paper clip, just pushed it into the tusk and then pushed that into the main bone area just to give it a little extra rigidity. It was about this time that I realized how fun this was because I couldn't make a mistake. Any mistake I made, I could change. And if the clay started to dry out a little, I just added some water and it reactivated and I was just going at it again. If you have any tips or tricks for this and you know something that could have made it easier or how I could have done it better, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Now the entryway is composed of three pieces of foam that I cut at 45 degree angles and then hot glued together. They're about uh, three and a half inches in height and um, about three inches in width. The two angled pieces of foam at the top of the entryway are three inches in height and they're cut at a 65 degree angle just like everything else is about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And then in between that is just a, a one inch thick piece of foam that's slid in between the two angled pieces. One of the things I wanted this build to be was modular because how much use was I going to have for a demonic ape, you know, step pyramid more than one time. So I made sure that each of the levels are going to be removable. So therefore you can either have one three level step pyramid or you could have three separate buildings that you spread around. So here you can see what they would look like if all three were separated and spread out as though you had like a complex or maybe a temple complex or some type of, you know, enemy complex that the party had to explore. What's nice is the roofs are removable and the inside of the buildings are fully playable. Well, that's gonna do it for this time. I've still got some work to do on this build. I've got stairs I still have to craft and I'm still not done with the ape skull. I've got some more work to do on that and then there's the painting. Hopefully we'll get that all done in part two and you can see a completed high throne. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one.